Hey guys, what's going on? It's a steaming pile of ship, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Tier 10 American cruiser, the USS Des Moines. But before we get into this game, I do want to apologize for having uh, not only a missed upload, but also a late upload, which was a bit unfortunate. Uh, last weekend, I was on vacation, so I uploaded the carrier videos as soon as I got home, but of course, they were a little bit late, uh, and that's because where I was staying, we didn't have any internet. This weekend, the video is up late because we had a storm blow through and it knocked out power for most of Saturday uh, and even a little bit of Sunday, I believe. Um, well, maybe not Sunday. I, I can't quite remember, but I was pretty busy Sunday even though the power was back on. So unfortunately, I'm just now having time Monday night to sit down and record this. So hopefully you're at least seeing this by Wednesday. Anyways, we are on the north map, I believe it's called, uh, and we're going to head towards the, that little, well, the large middle island right there. Um, one of the strengths of the Des Moines is that it is very good at holding down areas, especially when you have cover. And that's because the guns on it have this kind of shell arc that just goes right over, makes it very, very easy to land shots on targets that are further uh, a little bit further away that might not be able to land them on you. So we're going to head towards the corners, sort of, so to speak, of the islands here. Obviously, the Des Moines being a fairly squishy ship, I do want to keep cover in between me and the enemy at all times. So that's going to be the probably a lot of the damage in this game I'll be doing from behind cover. Now this is a standard battle, so unfortunately my radar is not going to be as useful because there are no caps to really lock down with radar, but that doesn't mean we won't be using it. And right now, looks like we're going to find a nice little Bismarck over there to shoot at. Now we'll be seeing a lot of armor piercing being used in this game, but right now we are going to start using the armor, or the high explosives rather, to try and get some fires started on this enemy Bismarck. The Des Moines having a 5.5 second reload is pretty good at starting fires. Unfortunately, we didn't get one there. Um, but if you do have battleships that are being really uh, stubborn, not wanting to give you any broadsides, stuff like that, uh, you can easily load up high explosive and just start burning them down from the waterline. We're slowing down here a little bit. I want to get right up on the edge of this island here. I don't want to be right in the channel in case we get torpedoes coming in. And it looks like something is fairly close to right there. We do have a Missouri, so let's start working him over with the high explosive. He's not looking at me, so I'm not too worried about giving too much broadside here yet. But he can... well, it looks like he's starting to swivel his guns a little bit. But we're about behind cover here, so I'm not too worried. We do have a Shimikaze spotted over there. Of course, Des Moines having radar. Uh, this is not the place where the Shimikaze wants to be, because not only is he spotted right now he was spotted uh, I will easily be able to spot him with my radar and he does become spotted again by the friendly carrier I believe it's an Essex uh, or Taiho maybe uh, well whichever one it is he spotted the Shimikaze and now we're going to start working him over since we have the angle to fire upon him and this again is not where Shimikaze should be because not only are the planes spotting his torpedoes and him but as soon as he smokes up which he's doing right now all I have to do is pop radar and this guy is pretty much going to be toast. And there's a nice 3000 damage hit. The torpedo bombers are going in. I don't even end up needing to use my radar because the carrier, which was a Taiho, manages to take him out. Now we do have some anti or some excuse me, some aircraft coming in, so we'll hit our anti-aircraft defense consumable uh, and hopefully shoot down a good portion of these planes over here. Taiho fighter is going in to help out. I do want to make sure that since the enemy carrier is in Essex, that if I can help out my friendly Taiho's fighters, which I just designated the enemy fighters right there, that I'm doing so. His fighters are more than capable of cleaning up the strike aircraft, so if I can kill the enemy fighters, which are the real threat to him, uh, we should be fine. And we're shooting down a lot of planes. It's no problem for the Des Moines. The Des Moines has one of the best anti-aircraft ratings in the game. And even when you don't have the defensive fire cooldown, it's extremely potent. We're still shooting down planes even though our AA ran out. 
and with an AA range of, I believe, 7.2 kilometers, uh, you really can put up quite a, a defensive bubble around your friendlies to help protect them. We're switching over to this side of the island here, and this is a really dangerous spot if a destroyer decides to come around the corner here, but I do have my radar still usable yet. So if I need it or if I feel the need to pop it, we can certainly do that just to make sure that there's not someone around the other side trying to ambush me. And we do see a smoke cloud. And we do have a few teammates, so we'll go ahead and pop that just to see what's around the corner here. And luckily we don't have any destroyers that are really in an area that are probably going to be able to really hurt us. But unfortunately, since we are on the side of this island here, completely safe from any harm. It means we do have to rely on friendly ships to go and shoot the enemy ships. Uh, sometimes this is a gamble that you have to pay or that you have to play with really in order to secure some kills for your team. Now we are in the huge advantage here. We've got two of their destroyers taken out. Uh, another one of their destroyers, you can see the Fletcher is very weak. Uh, and their last destroyer is only a tier 8 and it's a Benson. So we still have a Gearing, we still have a Kagero, we still have a Yagumo. We've got quite a few destroyers that can easily take on a Benson if we take out this Fletcher. And quite frankly they can take the Fletcher out fairly easily too. But we might be able to do it ourselves. And this is where I do push in just a little bit too much because I'm trying to use the island here as cover. And I'm able to do it for a, f a little bit. Um, however, I'm just far enough that the Missouri, the Bismarck over there, are able to stream some shots in over the smaller islands. And now the Missouri is giving us broadside and there's also a Baltimore, which we I'm personally more worried about the Baltimore because of the higher reload. Uh, but we're going to load armor piercing up to try and do some damage to these guys. Now the Des Moines, the Baltimore, Pensacola, you name it. The U.S. cruisers have these super heavy 8-inch shells, and that means that they get a little bit better penetration angles than most other tier, uh, or excuse me, most other 203mm um, cruisers, and that gives them a really, really good uh, ability to citadel and just do, generally speaking, uh, high amounts of armor-piercing damage. And you're seeing that's really what we're focusing on over here, even against the Missouri, since he's giving us fairly broadside. Uh, he's probably giving us a little too much angle here, but we are trying to get some nice armor piercing hits and we will switch back to HE because it looks like he's turning out. I want to set him on fire, but we do still have plenty of broadside cruisers. We've even, we've even spotted the uh, enemy Essex, so right now we're going to focus on him, try and take him out, especially with these nice armor piercing shells. We should be able to get some decent damage on him because he's giving us a broadside and uh, some people don't know this, but the hangar on carriers apparently counts as Citadel as well. So I think that might be why they can't detonate, because it'd be really easy to hit the areas where they could detonate from. Um, just my theory, I don't know for sure. Now you're seeing one of the disadvantages of these high floaty arcs and slow floaty arcs of the Des Moines, and that is I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to pinpoint the exact... Uh, lead I need to give to the Essex over there and unfortunately as we go around the island and you saw we were able to shoot over that right there and that's a fairly large hill um, but it is a little harder to truly dial in the range on this we're gonna follow the shells in we do manage to hit him but of course it's pretty much a moot point at this point because he's not only unspotted but we can't shoot him even if we were in the uh, or even if he was spotted now we dipped out of there a little bit, but since a lot of ships are going around the far side, we are going to try and get back to the point that we were just previously at in order to hold it down a little bit more. And I notice we have a ton of teammates, including our Taiho, um, pushing around to their side of the map. You can see the Taiho looks like he's in about E5 or E4, one of those on the mini-map down below, uh, which is pretty, I think it's pretty brave of him. Um, it's very handy, too, because it means his strike aircraft are that much closer, that much easier to, um, well, bring back and rearm. We do have a North Carolina over there fighting another North Carolina. Um, they look like the Iowa that is near him has taken out the enemy North Carolina, but before he could do so, our North Carolina fell as well. So that is a tad bit problematic. 
Right now we are trying to push around here because I do see that this Missouri is pretty much, uh, he has his hands full with all of my friendlies over there. So we're going to try and hopefully get some damage on him from behind. Uh, we might be able to, it looks like he'll probably end up dying before we can, but well, maybe we will go ahead and take a few shots at him and I'm not gonna look because there was a Zao over here I want to get the guns turning but we do manage to secure the kill now we're immediately switching to armor piercing and you can do it very quickly because the Des Moines again has a 5.5 second reload so we switch over to armor piercing and immediately start going to work on the broadside Zao and you see that even at this range it is a tad bit hard to truly get the correct lead on this Zao now he does stealth up, but unfortunately for him, or maybe stupidly, I'm not quite sure, he ends up firing at me, which ruins his stealth. We have enemy aircraft coming in, strike aircraft, so I'm going to use my AA defensive fire. Hopefully start shooting down these torpedo bombers, because I'm really not in a good spot to uh, avoid them. Uh, we're going to designate the dive bombers above us as well. Unfortunately, he does manage to hit us with one. It's only one fire though, and of course we shot down all of his torpedo bombers, so really now I just have to worry about more dive bombers. We're constantly designating these as priority targets. Of course you can't see it in the replay file, but that's why I keep looking up into the sky. I'm control clicking each of the squadrons in order to shoot them down, or to focus them so that we get a little bit more AA DPS against them. And of course when you focus each one, that makes it, again, a priority target, so if I want to focus torpedo bombers that are coming in, you can easily do that, which is what we did earlier. Enemy Missouri has been spotted over there. We are going to let this fire burn out because at this point, uh, there's no point in wasting our damage control. There is a Baltimore coming up behind us, but really, uh, we're going to have to hope that our teammates can really keep that guy at bay long enough for us to do a little bit of damage to this Missouri or back up and get the guns turning and again I'm using armor piercing here because the US armor piercing is quite good and you're seeing that we're not getting the best results uh, <laughs> we'll uh, ignore that for a little bit while we go for those Fletcher and our secondaries get the kill but we really can do some damage with these secondary er, well yes the secondaries when they hit can kill destroyers but the armor piercing really does do a lot of damage and it's something that I think a lot of people on US cruisers overlook because of how weird the shell arcs are anyways there are only a few enemy ships left my team is even the carrier I, again ironically amusingly whatever you want to call it uh, is capturing the enemy base so at this point let's try and get some more damage we do spot the enemy Essex He's sending in torpedo bombers. We don't have our AA defensive fire back yet, but because our AA is strong enough as is, we are still shooting down most of his torpedo bombers. And it looks like he's actually at the edge of our range here. Uh, he may be returning those to rearm and refuel them. However, I don't think it's going to matter too much. The real worry that we have here is, of course, the dive bombers, which are now coming for us. He's pretty desperate. He knows he can't win, but he wants to take somebody down, and I really don't want to be that person, so we'll pop defensive fire, and we'll start shooting down even more planes. Again, focusing each individual squadron. We'll wait till these guys are all shot down or have dropped, and then we'll repair that fire, because at this point... We don't have a heal left. We do get the clear sky, uh, but we don't have a heal left, so we do have to manage our health points as much as we can. Uh, and of course, the game is almost over. Now, luckily, this Zao didn't have armor piercing loaded because he probably could have killed me. I was not expecting him to be right there. I thought the game was pretty much over, but we're going to farm him for a little bit more damage since he wants to go broadside straight in the wall. That doesn't bother us. We'll rack up the citadels and own him and we get ourselves the high caliber. I have to admit, I was pretty amused by this game because when I queued up for it, I hadn't played the Des Moines for quite a long time, and I finally managed to have a pretty good game in order to show you guys on pretty much the first game back. So that made me really happy, 
really excited I'd be able to show this ship off. So a pretty good result if I do say so for myself. We did 171,000 damage. We sunk four ships, didn't quite get the Kraken unleashed. However, we got a much rarer, in my opinion, award, which was the Clear Skies Medal for shooting down 58 planes, and that's definitely something that the Des Moines is capable of doing just because of the raw anti-aircraft power. We did get nine citadels. We only started two fires, but remember, we did mostly focus on armor piercing, so I'm actually a little bit uh, surprised I didn't get more citadels considering the amount of damage that we ended up doing. Uh, again, high caliber award, clear skies, dreadnought, and amusingly, we got a nice little close quarters expert for killing that very weak enemy destroyer near the end. Top of the team. Now, it's not as surprising to get huge experience numbers in the Des Moines. You see that I got 3,396 base experience in the Des Moines, and apparently there is a modifier that allows you to get much more experience per battle than you would in a normal ship. So, um, quite frankly, I'm not as surprised that it is a Des Moines that pushes out this number of base experience, um, but it's still quite a bit, and I am definitely not going to complain. Once again, Close Quarters Expert, Dreadnought, Clear Sky, and High Caliber were among the achievements we got. Moving on, main battery was the bulk of the damage. Of course, you know, you don't have torpedoes on the Des Moines, so that's where all your damage comes from. 32,000 of it was from HE shells, 120,000 of it was from armor piercing, and we did get 18,000 done by fires with a, musing, or a measly, excuse me, uh, 780 damage done by our secondary batteries. Damage received 78,000, 60,000 was from artillery. We did get hit by a bomb here and there, and we did let a fire burn out, so that was a pretty decent chunk there, totaling to about 17,000 on its own. Uh, we had a potential damage of, uh, ugh, excuse me, 1,415,000, so there were a lot of ships at one point wanting us gone, and that's definitely one of the reasons why the Des Moines uses cover and why that becomes sometimes an advantage to have such floaty shell arcs you can really use that to your advantage by shooting over islands that the enemy cannot shoot you if you're behind um, so basically you get to lob balloons with uh, rocks tied to the bottom of them so they return to earth at the enemy but they can't lob anything at you so it ends up working out fairly well in the end once you get used to the shell arcs. Finally, I had a ton of flags. I also had a ton of, um, I think it, well, I want to say this was a double XP weekend or something like that. Uh, yes, 200% right there, so quite a big chunk of experience with 15,000 ship experience and 2,300 um, free experience. But again, bunch of modifiers and all that, um, and I had camo and whatnot. Credits, 430,000. Again, remember, Military Month, Contributor Flag, Camo, Flags, all of that. So, normally you won't make nearly like this, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you do get the permanent camo for the Des Moines, you do make quite a bit of uh, experience. Uh, so, if you like to convert because of that little modifier and you want to play a Tier 10 still, not a bad ship to go for, or put that permanent camo on if you already have the ship. Uh, and it does give you a decent amount of credits whenever you have one of those tier 10 permanent camos. Anyways, let's move on to the build. Alright, now that we're back in port, we're going to quickly go over one thing. This unfortunately is not the permanent camo that I've got mounted here. I like showing off the permanent camos, but I actually don't have it on the ship because it's... Well, it's not bad, but it really isn't anything special, and I'm just not a huge fan of the pattern on it. Uh, so I haven't gotten it quite yet. Anyways, that out of the way, let's go and start off with the consumables, and I'm going to say it right off the bat, you're at tier 10, this is a very, very important uh, tier to have pretty much everything premium if you can have it, uh, well, unless you don't want the premium scout plane on some ships, but this ship, the Des Moines, does not have that option, uh, well, okay, it does, but you give up radar for it, so don't, don't even, no, don't even consider it, forget that I even said it, right? No, you're going to want the Repair Party 2 to be premium. That way you get the extra charge. That way it he or that it uh, comes back quicker. Same with your Damage Control Party 2. You want that to be back quicker so that you can use it. 
Um, sometimes you do have carriers going after me, which is kind of what you saw where I got the clear sky. So very handy for that or when you get uh, you know hit by that unlucky torp or the destroyers like to fight back or whatever it is. You're at tier 10, these two are very, very handy. Then you're going to want to prioritize probably your defensive fire too because your AA is just so good. Um, and you, you saw even with the premium defensive fire that I was, uh, not always, you know, it wasn't always reloaded when it would have been handy to be reloaded. So um, having that premium is very important. Obviously, Surveillance Radar 2 is going to be important because pretty much every match you face, or you have, you will face Destroyers. So, very, very handy, especially when you've got Domination Mode. You're able to pretty much lock down entire objectives because Destroyers fear going near it when they know a Des Moines is nearby. Going on to the upgrades, uh, you have these three turrets as your source of damage. You don't have Torpedoes. You only have these and your secondaries, and obviously we don't want to rely on secondaries to do damage in a cruiser like the Des Moines. That being said, you want Main Armaments Mod 1 because that's going to keep your turrets from being disabled uh, as much as it will. It's going to help keep them from being disabled. I have had both these front turrets knocked out, and let me tell you, it's not a very fun game after that. So get that modules to help prevent against it. In slot number two, you want AA Guns Mod 2. This is going to extend your AA range by 20% to a nice 7.2 on your long range AA, and that's a very huge buff. That also makes it able to scatter uh, fire, bio, uh, excuse me, scatter bombers that are going after friendly battleships and whatnot. Third slot, you're going to want Gunfire Control System Mod 2. This will give you a much needed range increase. Uh, you still only have about 18.4 kilometers for the main battery range with this, uh, but without it, you're something like 15.2 or 15.6, so you really want this, especially when you're going up against things like Yamatos that can almost bow pen you at 15 kilometers, so yeah. Slot number four, Damage Control System Mod 1. Pretty much no other choice here, because if you're taking engine hits or propulsion hits, you're already in a heap of trouble anyways, so yeah. Steering Gears Mod 2 in slot number 5, that will give you a nice rudder shift time of 6.9 seconds, and that coupled with a 770 meter turning circle radius means you're quite the little agile bugger that can ha it can dodge when it needs to, so if you do find yourself on ocean map and you've got to stay back at 17 kilometers because the battleships are just camping and won't go tank and you've got to do something this will really help you out finally in slot six you want concealment systems mod one this coupled with your captain skill for concealment will drop your concealment range down to 10.6 kilometers which is very very helpful it does allow you to get a little bit closer to the enemies and when you consider that your radar has a range of let's see 9.9 .9, and you're spotted at 10.6 kilometers, it pretty much means that anything that can spot you is almost guaranteed to be in radar range pretty much most of the time. So that's very, very handy right there. Speaking of captains, let's move on to him. You're going to start off with priority target, and that's very, very handy on any cruisers, but especially a squishy one like the Des Moines, allowing you to know when people are aiming at you. You'll go to Adrenaline Rush because the uh, turret traverse on the ship is fairly good. It's, uh, what is it, 30 seconds for a 180 degree turn time. So that's not bad on a ship like the Des Moines. Going back to the captain's skills. Uh, you'll probably want to go for Superintendent afterwards. Again, giving you the extra heal, the extra radar, the extra defensive fire. Gives you all of that. So it's very, very handy on the Des Moines. You get your money's worth with it. Then you're going to want to go for Concealment Expert. After that, go ahead and get advanced firing training. And then if you want, get demolition expert. We used a lot of armor piercing in that match, but this is very, very handy for helping you start fires when the battleships and cruisers don't give you broadside. Uh, if you don't want to go for demolition expert, but you still want a, a row number three um, skill, I would probably go with BFT to help out your AA a little bit more. It's not really needed. You saw how many I shot down without it, but it's still really really handy when you don't have your defensive fire consumable back. 
Finally, when I get the uh, last two points that I need, I will probably go ahead and spec it for Jack of All Trades just to give it an increased reload on all of my consumables because once again, you get a lot of them on this ship, they help out quite immensely, so having them reload quickly is very, very nice. Well, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I Again, I apologize for not having the uh, videos up on time. I like to have them up by the weekend, but unfortunately, last weekend I was on vacation, and this weekend I didn't have any power, so I was, again, unable to do so. Um, so, hopefully next weekend we're back to the sort of normal pace. Uh, no promises. I don't like to make promises that I don't know I can keep, and thank God I didn't do it last weekend because I would have had to bite my tongue on that. Um, but with any luck, we'll be back to normal pretty soon. This is a steaming pile of ship siming. Si <laughs> you know, I got so far without stuttering, I think, today. But this is a steaming pile of ship signing off. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video despite it being a little bit late. And thank you all for watching. You guys have a wonderful day. I'll catch you next time.